For today's video, we will answer a math challenge given by one of our followers from Vietnam. And the question goes like this. So given this expression, our goal is to simplify this one. So you can pause this video if you want to give this problem a try. And now, let's answer this question together. So the question is, what is this notation wherein the factorial symbol written first before the number or simply a factorial and then n? So this notation right here is equivalent to what we call n sub factorial. So, so this notation read as n sub factorial. So the question is, what is subfactorial? So it is the number of derangement. And what is a derangement? Derangement is n permutations where all of the n elements change their initial places or initial position. Now, for example, if we have two elements, we have a, b, we can rewrite this as b, a, wherein A is not in its initial position, also B is not in its initial position. So we can say that 2 subfactorial must be equal to just 1 because there's only one way to arrange these two elements such that all of its elements change their initial position. So we know 2 subfactorial must be equal to 1. Now how about if we have three elements, let's say A, B, and C. So one way we can write this as C, A, B. Now notice that C, A, and B are not in their initial positions. Also, we can rewrite A, B, C as B, C, A. Now here, take note that B, C, and A are not in their initial position. Now, if we have three elements, there are two possible ways wherein all of its elements change their initial places. So we can say that 3 subfactorial must be equal to just 2 or 2 ways. Now, how about there are 4, 5, 6, 7, and so on and so forth? Now, surprisingly, there's a formula to find the value of n subfactorial. So n subfactorial must be equal to the greatest integer value of n factorial over e. Now, this n factorial is the usual factorial. This is the product of all natural numbers less than or equal to n. And this e is the Euler's constant. We have 2.718 and so on and so forth. Now, using this formula, we can now find the value of 4 subfactorial, 5 subfactorial, 6 subfactorial, and 7 subfactorial. So let's start with 4 subfactorial. So 4 subfactorial must be equal to the greatest integer value of 4 factorial over e. Now 4 factorial must be equal to 24 and e can be written as 2.718 and so on and so forth. But 2.718 is enough, alright? Now 24 over 2.718, this will give us a value of 8.83. Now, we have the nearest integer function. So, the nearest integer from 8.83 must be equal to 9. Therefore, we can say that 4 subfactorial must be equal to 9. Alright, so how about 5 subfactorial? It must be equal to the nearest integer value of 5 factorial over e. Now, 5 factorial must be equal to 120. And e is still 2.718. Now, 120 divided by 2.718, this will give us a value of 44.15. And the nearest integer from 44.15 must be equal to 44. Therefore, 5 subfactorial must be equal to 44. Alright, so how about 6 subfactorial? It must be equal to the nearest integer value of 6 factorial over e. Now, if we compute this, we have 720 over 2.718. And if we divide this, we get 264.9. And the nearest integer from 264.9 must be equal to 265. Therefore, 6 subfactorial must be equal to 265. And for the last 
1, we have 7 subfactorial right here. And 7 subfactorial must be equal to the nearest integer value of 7 factorial over E. And it must be equal to 1,854. Now, using those values, we can now evaluate this expression. Alright, so let's do that. We know 4 subfactorial must be equal to 9. 5 subfactorial must be equal to 44. And 6 subfactorial must be equal to 265. And the last one, 7 subfactorial must be equal to 1,854. Now simplify this. 9 plus 44 plus 265, this will give us a value of 318. Now simplify this, our lowest term, we get a value of 53 over 309. Therefore, our answer to this challenge question must be equal to 53 over 309. And as always, we are done.